the rating of the substation, so they will not be upgrading that to a 13,200 volts. So. Did you mention 86 Lewiston? Yes. It's, it's, I don't think that's an area where they have enough acreage to be able to And that one doesn't work. It's no. The substation is really, really small. No. So I just wanted to give you guys, provide you all of the data so that you can see that there is a limitation. There's a finite number of systems that can be installed in this town. And all of these substations that have potential are already over capacity. So let me ask a question. Are you or your agent or anyone have any plans to upgrade these substations? We did upgrade this I one. Know you did the one. And that's the not feasible to go any further. No. No. So why would residents saying there's still be an approach that there's no more. A lot of companies don't go into this level of granularity when they're looking at something. <coughs> they take the tax rolls and they send out letters to homeowners or landowners who own in excess of 10 acres, maybe less than that, because they just don't have that level of sophistication and granularity of what's going on on the mapping. It takes a lot of time and effort to come up with this information. We have electrical engineers on staff most companies, most of our competitors, can't afford that overhead. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we do have access to information that most companies wouldn't go into. And path of least resistance, it's cheaper to just send out a mass <coughs> mailer than it is to find sites and go into that like, sophisticated level of prospecting. So. All right, so I think what it means in, in conclusion there's more projects in queue than the Swan Road Station can absorb. So it's a first come, first serve basis. So when that station's capacity is maxed out, any other site in line then becomes infeasible and drops out of consideration. And we're already seeing that. We're going to see drop that. So yeah. we can keep you guys informed. Please do. Yeah. So that's what we know. That's what we know about the capacity, the electrical capacity of the grid in the town of Lewiston. I guess the only other one was the one in, Sh in Shawnee, which is really not in the town of Lewiston. No, that one is <coughs> Wheatfield in Cambria. Yeah. <coughs> How far can a substation be from a solar project? It depends on the length of the circuit, but the further away, the more costly it is to interconnect. So we, w we wouldn't go any more than five miles max. Well, my recollection is correct. We were told point blank, that of the two projects that we approved, basically we're maxing out on what those two could hold. And now the one of substation has been approved to be able to take on more. So that's a little bit different than we did, heard a year and a half, two years ago. So I'd like to be writing for National Grid. Well, we would have to invite, I think we'd have to invite you from here. Yes, we really would. I mean, that, I mean, I appreciate you looking into it years ago. I think for you know going into the future, we definitely would have to contact you. Well, I think that, that, that's certainly worthy of what John was saying about the moratorium, is that based on the lack of that information, that we can slow things down you know, to get the right answer. Okay. That's not what we had heard. Right. Okay. Can I assume that this has no impact on the average homeowner that wants to put something on his roof or in his backyard? Their, in, their interconnection applications are so small okay. and insignificant that it would not okay. impact that. How about, uh, let me ask Tom, the thing we're proposing later tonight, is that going to impact individual homeowners? No, it won't. There's a cutout for that. Okay, good. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. I don't, I think that's it. I, that's all I got for the capacity issue. I agree. Okay. We'll move, we'll move on. There was a comment about moving the project further to the rear of the parcel and away from Williams Road. Um, this would result in an increase in, in, a, in what we call avoidable permanent wetland impacts. I provided you with the, uh, some of the wetland figures that we submitted with our current application. And by moving the project further west, you'll note that uh, there's more wetlands that would be impacted because if we move the field back, west further. We then got more uh, federal wetlands to cross with the access driveway and therefore increase the uh, amount of wetland impacts. And again, if we move it back, then the only thing screening that third field 
third field back to Williams Road is a hedgerow, which would be likely be impacted, and that would then make that field more visible to the viewers to the south. It wouldn't have a woods in front of it screening it. The hedgerow would have to be removed either in whole or partiality. comment was about the staging area and the storage area that we have located out at the front of Williams Road and the comments were to move the staging and storage areas out into the proposed array field. And following the public hearing we did briefly consider this, however there were two compelling reasons that this was not advanced further. One was significant opposition from the neighbor to the north, Ms. Evelyn Lauer, and she sent us two emails, I've attached those copies of the emails to the letter. She uh, definitely opposed that idea. Um, the other consideration is it makes the construction more difficult and costly and would result in increased temporary wetland impacts, which are in fact avoidable by having the staging area in an upland non-wetland area adjacent to Williams Road is clearly proposed. So that moving on to the fourth item there was about I, I, item four on this letter is staging area management. Bregel acknowledges the neighbor's concerns regarding this proposed roadside staging area, the storage area, and offers a uh, series of policies and guidelines that will implement to further mitigate those concerns. They will emphasize to all delivery drivers and delivery services and policy or practice that all deliveries are made during normal weekday hours between 7 and 5, 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. And will make every effort to schedule those deliveries such that there should not be any trucks waiting on or along Williams Road to make the deliveries to the site. Truck drivers making deliveries outside of those normal weekday hours are not to stage, queue up, or otherwise park on the shoulder or side of Williams Road, but rather stage or wait at an appropriate truck stop rest area beyond the project site prior to the arrival in Lewiston until such time the delivery could be made between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Bregel will also make an effort to schedule deliveries for just-in-time manner, such that the received materials will be used or otherwise installed on the site within two working days of their delivery. And with limited areas to store materials within the designated roadside staging and storage area, immediately following delivery of the solar array materials, said materials will be transferred by motorized forklifts into and distributed around the boundary or edges of the proposed array field for easy access during construction. This policy or practice is also necessary in order to maximize the production of construction crews. Um, I don't think Borrego would object to even that set of guidelines <coughs> is part of the conditions of the special use permit. There was a concern we had moved the access driveway south about 25 feet and I think we have some comments or concerns that we should move it back to the original proposed location. So, Borrego did some in-house rudimentary visual analysis. They concluded that the currently proposed driveway entrance, which is shifted 25 feet south from the existing driveway location, together with further reductions in existing tree removals, and strategically located tree planting significantly reduces the opportunity to view the array from Williams Road. Further mitigate the visual impact of the rain field for Williams Road, regardless of the access driveway's locations, Borrego was willing to add slats or other similar chain link fence fabric infill screening to any fence section or gate visible from Williams Road. We do acknowledge that this may not fully mitigate views from second floors of nearby residents, but we do expect the proposed tree planting will eventually grow to a height that will begin to achieve that level of screening. There was also some comments or concerns about the amount of tree clearing on the eastern side of the array field along the north side of the driveway access and also along the south side as it enters the array field. Some of the 0.28 acres of tree clearing shown in this area on the tree clearing plan is necessary, necessary to prevent shading of panels in that quadrant, that southeast quadrant of the array field during early morning hours. However, we and the Borrego design team reevaluated the shading and determined that tree clearing could be reduced to 0.19 acres. And I attached a revised landscaping plan to this slide, and I, I have it showing here on this color map. There will be more existing vegetation being retained 
On the north and south sides of the access driveway as it approaches the array field that is shown on previous site plans. And now tree plantings, although fewer, are now still being proposed along the access driveway as it approaches the array field. And those that are proposed are now in different locations to the array field as it further blocks the view, the opportunity for view from Williams Road. In summary, we hope the attached information addresses the many project related concerns raised at the public hearing, and we're open to addressing any more concerns or comments that you may have tonight from the, from the board. Where is the appropriate truck stop? Well, I was, I can't say for sure because I'm, I'm not totally familiar with this area, but um, I would think that there are opportunities for truck stops in, in Pembroke and in the Buffalo area. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the proximity of those to the expressway here in the north end of I-9, I-190, but uh, that was the, uh, we weren't going to be too specific on that other than we're, we're trying to tell truck drivers not to arrive on site before 7 a.m. With cell phones today, it shouldn't be a problem to have a way to appropriate call to be able to come on site as needed. My other question is, there was some concern on your road about dump trucks moving soil. Will there be many dump trucks involved with moving soil on the Williams Road site? No, there shouldn't be. Um, the most, some topsoil has to be excavated out and will be stored in areas around the site for restoration, but we're, we're boxing out moving topsoil to install the access driveway. And some topsoil gets removed for the equipment pad areas. But the goal is to try to store that as much as possible on site and seed it so that in the future when the site needs, if and when the site is restored, that same topsoil can be used and put back. Tim, can topsoil be removed and sold off the site? No. Uh, there isn't a restriction on the solar water that I saw <coughs> for it, but. Does it violate the mining law? It is, it is, yeah, but the solar law is a, is a whole different law compared to the mining law. And, and then we, we, we have a law that says if you have a construction project and excess topsoil is from the construction project, the town code allows you to do that. To? <laughs> like if you put a parking lot in for, a, for like a tops plaza, you're allowed to get rid of that topsoil. If it, you, you can't just go mine the property, but if you're building a house and you have excess dirt, you're allowed to sell it. And this is considered one of those projects. Correct. Yeah. And so I, I can just tell you on this project, we're not going to take it up off site. Gotcha. Anything we have, we're going to use, like Mark said, we're going to spread it on site for use in deep. And I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you behind my house, all the topsoil is still sitting there, and they used one dump truck for the whole site. Well, I heard about the more dump trucks yeah. today. They said there were numerous trucks moving up and down the yeah. road. That's a, that's a whole different company, and I haven't had anybody call our office, so thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. The, uh, the lattice that you were proposing to, as a blind until the trees have uh, matured, is that something that uh, has longevity, or will it uh, be removed, or it, well, it's there till It does have longevity, and if anything happens to it during, if there's a full and m operation maintenance, they're going to come by a couple times a year, and they can replace slats that have fallen out. Have any of your previous projects permitted uh, uh, vegetation to grow on the vine, on the uh, fencing? We do have a product called Hedgelink, which looks like vines, which you can weave into the fence, which from far away actually looks like vegetation. And we could propose that if you prefer something like that. It just, uh, old, it just takes old time for yeah. It takes time for vines to grow in. Mark, the only thing I would ask you to do is speak with Miss. I spoke, spoke with Mrs. Lauer today at length. Okay. Could you just talk to her? She was concerned. She's in the blue shirt right there, the one you had the email conversation with. She was concerned from her property, some screening. And if you could talk to her, um, I know you've talked to her before. Um, well, I did, Lindy responded to that in one email. Um, and, I, and as I said before, there's quite a bit of vegetation between the proposed array field and her, her house or dwelling. And most of that vegetation is on her property or their property. So it, would, it begs the question is, you know, if they want to clear it, to their property line, 
then the question is, is Borrego responsible for screening the array from their house, or from their view of their house? And that's a question I really can't answer. That's kind of a board decision. <laughs> but given the fact that the special use permit is renewable, and I think it can be renewed with additional conditions, if she chooses to remove her vegetation and upon the special use permit renewal, you can ask Borrego to plant more trees to screen the array fields. Is it annually that it's renewed? Five years. I'd have to look at it. <clears throat> I, I can't recall exactly. Uh, Ms. Slaughter, I'll look into this more. One of the questions I had was, any of the tree plantings that are there now are trees that lose their leaves? No, so, no. All the, any new tree planting we put in will be conifers. That's what you're planting, but I was told there was not going to be anything down my property line to shade your fence. Right. And well, all my trees are going to lose their leaves, and you'll be able to see through them. It's 500 feet of woods between your your house and the and the site. Your house is over here, and there's 513 feet through the woods to the nearest array that, that nearest array panel. So I, I don't know if you can see the field when the leaves are off now. I suspect you probably can't. But you have to answer that question for me. I, I, I can't. I haven't been on your property to know. I haven't seen your property to know. But I just wouldn't expect in this several hundred feet of vegetation here of trees that lose their leaves, I still would not expect you to be able to see the field from your property. So you're not going to do anything down this whole side? This is all going to be open? This is all going to be open and be mowed within 10 feet out. <coughs> from 10 feet out, it can be left to grow back to natural. And it will grow back quickly, the uh, wet nature of the field. Okay. Mrs. Lauer, I'll, I'll talk to you more tomorrow. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Um, thank you, Mark. Yep. Um, anybody have anything else for Mark? Okay. Thank Supervisor, you. may I speak? Yeah. Just proceed. Yeah, go ahead. Um, because of the number of issues that came up at the last at the public hearing that have been addressed today by Borrego, as well as I understand there was a, an issue that the fire inspector brought up that I think has been resolved as well. Yeah. Um, what I, what I would recommend is that the board, ultimately the board needs to do three things on this. They're going to need to do secret first. They're going to have to do a resolution on that. They're going to have to do a resolution a rule with regard to the special use permit and also site plan approval. So what I would recommend is that I could draft those resolutions given um, the, the nature of this application and, and how other applications of a, a similar type have gone in the community, including litigation in the past. I'll draft resolutions for um, for the board to be able to move on at the next meeting, if you'd like, I can, I'll draft them. Okay. So take no action tonight. And take no action tonight. That's, that's the strongest yeah. way to do it, is that I'll draft them and then you have to vote on them. That'd be the best way to move forward. Okay. So based on legal advice, we're not going to take any action tonight. So, um, but thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, so when For the next meeting. I'll, okay. I'll have them ready for the next meeting. Perfect. Unless something else comes up, um, I'll have them ready and I would expect <coughs> them to be ready to be voted on at the next meeting. We were not included in on anything for the well, fire inspector. I'd like to see what was exchanged. And I can't that. speak to that either, Mr. Guy. I'm not sure what that I was. I can speak to that. Go so ahead. We, we like to see things yep. in the hard county. Go ahead. Yep, so I talked to Pat myself, and we were, we, Pose the question to him if we reduce the width of the road to 18 feet to reduce our wetland impacts inside the fence, was he okay with that? And he said, No, I don't want to reduce because then everybody's going to ask for a reduction on road width. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep it at 20 feet. So there was a plan that reduced it, but we brought it back to 20, mm -hmm. and so he was okay with that. And we actually shortened the, the uh, road a little bit, and he was okay. He, he liked that because he wouldn't have to drive in as far to the equipment area. So, he didn't give me anything in writing, but you can talk to him. I've talked to him a few times. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Came, he spoke with you about it. Well, I'm a strong advocate of a good paper trail, you know, all part of the pack. But, okay. yeah, you guys can expect board movement um, at the next meeting, which is, I think, the 14th, maybe.
Thank you very much. Wolf Run Easement. Ross Johnson. Drainage easements. We don't like this, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I think we've got a path forward on the drainage easement. Um, we've been working hard. We work with Bill Tine. Of course, we're part of our builder. Um, he's been working with folks on this side table and Tim as well. Um, and then they've got a proposed options. They've got three options. I'm good with all three of them. Um, if, if you guys can vote and agree with the option that they want to go with, then I think I'd be okay and I'd be good at, I'd be, I'd get to go ahead and Tim to put my fence up and then I'd owe a letter to Tom or a, a surveyor letter to go ahead and get boundary. Yeah, right, so, so we've had some further conversations following last meeting and we've gotten to a point where I think there's three proposals in front of you right now. Uh, Mr. Landon did identify a, a different uh, drain scenario that was in there, that, so there needed to be some modifications that are addressed here. There's, there's, I guess, three options in front of you. That are, whatever one the board chooses, um, and maybe Mr. Lanny could speak to what the best one would be. I think all of them. Choose that one. The first, <coughs> I think is the first, the first proposal. It's easier. Uh, it's probably the easiest for everybody. It's the e easiest in a lot of ways. It's easiest to do as well. Um, is it, the Hold on a second. Hold on a second. The, pro the, the problem is. Our first page and second page are identical. Oh, I see. Okay. The tail's not there. Right. Right. Um, so if the board's inclined to approve this, what we would do is, I still need a legal description of the, the new easement. So I need the wording for that, which we'll get. And uh, in the meantime, we'll prepare the new easement to be filed. But I know that time is short in terms of the season. And, and Mr. Johnson would like to move forward with, with his permit for his fence, which I think Mr. Masters is also in agreement with. Everything looks like it's lined up now that um, Mr. Lennon has an opportunity, has had an opportunity to look it over. So we're in a position you guys can, can move on, uh, on one of the recommendations in terms of what the easement should be. Everything will fall into place and we'll, we'll get the easement filed. What easement is this? Is this the one no. I, I maintain? Yes. This is pocket. It's, it's all part of How come I wasn't included with that? You weren't here. You were out of town. I've been here for a week now. No, the last meeting. No, I guess we didn't reach out to you about it. Okay, now who I maintain it. Has anyone walked it? I, I sent it to, to Darlene. I have your copy of it. Yes. I was just wondering why I wasn't included with this. Yeah. Which, which one did you send? With the options on I sent him. Oh, the <coughs> Not the one from today, but the one before. Oh, okay. Just Did you have a chance to look at them, Dave? Not really. I thought we were going to take a walk and look through, go through the, okay. well, the property. Is, is there a chance that we can approve the option that you recommend with Dave's approval? Yeah, on that's we well. can do that. We can do that. Why don't you just? I think you're going to choose the first option, right? Which is what? That's the one that was recommended. recommended, and it's the easiest one. To change. <laughs> so why doesn't the board approve that pending? Conversation with Dave and the, and the walking of it, and if there's something else that comes up, then yeah. Yeah. then Tim won't issue the building permit. Right. But if, if there's not, do you know the address? Four two four. Move forward. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. That's what See I was. Tomorrow. Okay. Phrase it carefully, Tom, so we can. So I would ask for someone to propose a motion that would allow for um, the town to file an amended drainage easement in the back of um, Ross Johnson's backyard pending um, some further investigation by Dave Train on behalf of the Highway Department, as well as um, some additional legal work, including the uh, legal written language for the meets and bounds of the easement to be provided by the applicant. And assuming that those things fall into place as anticipated, um, I would ask the board to approve the first option that has been presented in front of you and recommended by Mr. Lang. Any, any other properties involved in this? No. no. It's it's for actually for reduction of the easement. Yes, well, I know it's a reduction of the easement, but what's going on with the other properties that are involved? Next door, neighbors. There's nobody there. There will be. Yeah, there's nobody there. I'm only worried about mine right now. Well, that's the problem. You're worried about yours. Yeah. I'm worried about me. Well, they don't decide that's the pond. <laughs> you the, you, you the don't the maintain it. Yes, and I maintain it. Yeah, the ponds were signed. So I mean, I got the I got the one with the big long yard. All right, so that pond. What's the address? 
Four two four four. Four two four four. Make a motion we approve option number one, subject to Dave's uh, walk through and approval. I guess. That'll <coughs> work. Yeah, first, first you went to my description yeah. of your motion. It's one of those cases where we have to listen to our experts because uh, I don't know right. much about these ones. So we have a motion, can I get a second? Second. We have a motion, a second, no questions in there. Well, Stephen, you didn't mention, do you need to put the cell phone <coughs> number in here on the address? Yeah, in, the, in the motion? Okay. I don't think it's necessary for that motion. It is, uh, it is 14 of both of Yeah. Okay, first It is sub lot 14 of both <coughs> so We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. New business. Any uh, public correspondence? Um, under Supervisor Roderick, legal. Tom, do we have anything under legal besides that? No, there's there's the there's the local law that I've drafted for you, um, which I believe Councilman Jacoby is going to introduce later. Okay. Other than that, that's all I have. Engineering, Tom, anything? Uh, just that the police building, uh, we drive, drove by there yesterday, the structure starting to take some shape. Uh, they're in the middle of their uh, construction and the schedule, if I've got it here, should be complete about the end of November for the building. And following that, then it'll be the kind of before us. But projects have come along well. Police, police recreation storage area. Yeah, pardon me? Police building and recreation storage Yes, area. yeah, well, I call it the police and park building. <coughs> uh, today, so I encourage everybody to drive by. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, finance. Jackie, just to add on what Mr. Lennon said, you're going to want to get moving quickly on that electrical component to that, or we're going to have a building with no no lights. Right. So. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead, Jackie. Tonight's I present, which is before you, the 2020 preliminary budget submitted today, October 28, 2019. Okay. I'd also like um, to request a public hearing on the preliminary budget for November 7th at 6 o'clock. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Uh, November 7th. Thursday, November 7th. So it'll be a short meeting because it's only been like 6 30. Yes. So the public hearing will be November 7th at 6 p.m. on the on the preliminary budget. Okay. Jackie, could you speak up a little bit? There's Certainly. noise going on around. Certainly. Can you hear me? Yes. The first revision is to move a total of $323 from the parks personnel budget to the B fund unemployment insurance budget to cover unemployment. For parks department employee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The second revision is to move a total of $315 <coughs> from the police personnel budget to the police equipment budget to cover equipment purchases. So moved. Second. So motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Anything else? No, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Bax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Nothing. Councilman Guyman. Well, just uh, disappointed that our uh, intern from Niagara County Community College is not here tonight. Well, I thought we had it all set up that if he could not attend, he would call in and, and Donna and uh, Carol could have everything set up. I will check on that again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, the B team's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're the A team. <laughs> um, Councilman Jacoby. You will hold the. Uh, Tower thing until after I do the other two on my list. Don't take break. So we can get that moratorium right in so that people can, you know, off and on their way. Sound good? Yep. Okay. Now, oh, here it is. Um, <coughs> the town of Lewiston County of Niagara State of New York, a local law establishing a moratorium on utility scale solar energy system installations within the town for a period of six months 
be it enacted by the town board of the town of Lewiston as follows. Section one, purpose and intent. The purpose of this local law is to amend the code of the town of Lewiston to establish a moratorium on the processing, permitting, and or construction of utility scale solar energy systems within the town for six months. A moratorium will allow the town board ample time to examine, draft, review, and adopt effective policy regarding utility scale solar energy systems and ensure adequate restrictions and regulations are placed as may be necessary to promote and preserve the health, safety, and welfare of the town of Lewiston and its citizens. Section two, findings. Town of Lewiston Town Board does hereby find that without a temporary halt on the processing, permitting, and approvals for utility scale solar energy systems, there is the potential that such uses could be located in unsuitable areas within the town and or developed on particular lots with inappropriate dimensional requirements and or developed in such a density as to alter the fabric of the community. Such uses could have materially adverse and irreversible impacts on the town and may threaten the health, safety, or welfare of the town's citizens. The town board also finds that it is in need of additional time to perform the necessary analysis of the potential types of utility scale solar energy systems that are appropriate to meet the needs of the community to provide planned orderly growth and development of the town. Section three, moratorium imposed applicability for the period of six months, commencing on the effective date of this local law, or until such time as the town of Lewiston passes a local law concerning utility-scale solar energy systems, whichever is sooner, there shall be a moratorium on the processing, permitting, and or construction of utility-scale solar energy systems within the town of Lewiston, outside of the incorporated village of Lewiston. This moratorium shall not affect any existing or proposed building-mounted, ground-mounted, rooftop-mounted, or any other solar energy system that is designed and intended to generate electricity solely for the use of an individual lot. Additionally, the moratorium shall not affect any processing, permitting, and or construction of any utility-scale solar energy systems within the town that have already received town approval prior to the effective date of this local law. The term. This law shall take effect immediately, as proposed by the law, upon filing with the Secretary of State, and shall remain in full force and effect for a period of six months from its effective date. Section 5 is severability. The invalid, the invalidity, I guess, is that right, Tom? Invalidity. Invalidity, thank you. Of any word, section, clause, paragraph, sentence, or part, or provision of this local law shall not affect the validity or any other part of this local law which shall be in effect. I want to make a comment before we do anything. The comment is, this isn't my uh, law, although I'm 100% in favor of it. This is, uh, we all are concerned with this. I know that you think we just sit up here and don't listen to you. It's, uh, I don't know about everyone else, but I actually lost sleep over this. I hate the idea that we did something that's, that's uh, um, you know, injurious to you. And we're doing the best we can up here. Everyone up here, please.